Okay, so this is a response to Zana Joshi. She's made a video, Zana Responds Part 1, surrounded by patriarchy. Now, if you can't remember or you don't know who Zana Joshi is, you must have seen the video, the humongous video. Zana Joshi was the woman who was filming, the woman who was the victim. I say victim, of course, I mean survivor of the abhorrent, horrendous sexual harassment that took place on that day. Well, she's made a four-part response to what happened on that day. I'll be showing a little bit of footage of what happened on that day a little bit later in this video where it becomes relevant. Uh, but what I want to respond to here was this video that she's made surrounded by patriarchy, in which it's a call to arms really to us all to smash the patriarchy and all the things that the patriarchy leads to. I kind of get the impression from listening to her that once we've managed to smash the patriarchy, what we'll be left with will be something akin to the kind of thing that you see on those magazines that the Jehovah's Witnesses put through your door from the Watchtower Publication Society with the lion and the lamb all laying down in peace and harmony with one another and every fucker singing Kumbaya. Be something along those kinds of lines. But look, I decided to make this video. I'd started making some notes for it and then I was searching a name on the net and I saw this footage of her at a meeting public meeting which led me to think that perhaps she's I don't know maybe one roast potato short of a full Sunday lunch and that maybe she isn't the right person to respond to but I'll show you a clip of what I'm talking about just look at her eyes for fuck's sake and the crimes of racist, token, people of color politicians have gone up. Yeah, we noticed Lorena Gonzalez. We noticed. We noticed how after I spoke publicly against you, the cops sent racist, white supremacist rapists after me on bluelivesmatter.com. We saw that, we noticed, and we all know how in cahoots with the cops you are. Oh, I can't believe how relieved I am to hear somebody else say that, Zana. I'd begun to think that it was just me. But it's true what you say, the police, this is how they work now. They send round gangs of racist, white supremacist rapists to deal with people. And this is the thing, the politicians are in on it. And it's even the politicians of colour. It's not just the politicians of white anymore that are in on this. They're all in on the act now so you probably gather really why i thought mm, maybe i don't really need to respond to zana here you know maybe it's right not right thing to do but then i had a little look back because there were still a couple of little bits of her video that i wanted to respond to a couple of points that i thought were really interesting and, and sort of went beyond just zana joshi but while i was watching that video a second time one thing i noted was that on a couple of occasions she effectively called people out and said you disregard what women say when they raise their voices you just call them crazy and suggest that they don't need to be uh, responded to or taken seriously so i thought do you know what i'm not going to be that guy so she's going to get her response. And just to listen to Zana say that, let me play you those two clips. The challenge is that it is very hard for those who are marginalised, such as women of colour, to express how they feel without being called the angry brown woman or the angry black woman or the nagging woman or crazy. I... Their main complaint was that I raised my voice. They questioned my sanity because I spoke up. A patriarchal society wants women to shut up. And we have a long history of men confining women to mental asylums because those women didn't behave the way men wanted them to behave. Hmm. Uh, okay, so Zana, I've got to be honest with you here. Kind of concerns me a bit that you can see the wide uh, criticism that you received for that humongous episode and you can reflect back on it and just write that off as everybody criticizing you for having dared to speak your mind and nothing beyond that i'll talk a little bit more about that incident in a few minutes but before i, I get on to all of that let me say then okay I'll, I'll go along with what you say i won't write off what you say as you being crazy or anything like that but the quid pro quo to that of course means that from this point onwards I will effectively be holding your feet to the fire for every damn thing that you say. You will not be cut any slack on the grounds of any concerns that I may have in those regards, okay? So just be aware that you can't sort of have your cake and eat it with regards 
to that. So what Zana does in this video, the structure of the video is it's a series of slots of Zana talking to the camera much the same as I am doing now, except with much less charm than I managed to pull it off with, interspersed with footage of various different men reading from what are obviously pre-scripted lines that they're coming out with. And I don't know what she's trying to show with regard to that, but she seems to paint a picture of, of masculinity and of men within our society that even the most kindly and well-intentioned men are effectively boorish, sexist pigs with such diminished intellectual capacity that that they can barely tell when they are contradicting themselves within the very same sentence. So in terms of trying to smash the patriarchy, I'm not really sure that Zana is going to gather very many people on board with regard to a video like this. It very much seems to be um, 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 talking to the choir, you know, sort of preaching to the converted there and the converted very much being people that don't like men very much, I've got to say. So the first bit that I want to talk about with Zara is, Zana is that she does this marvellous bit where she redefines racism and sexism and not in the way that you think. No, no, no. She takes the redefinition of racism and sexism and redefines them yet again. It's because of a phenomenon called white fragility and male fragility. White liberals and men in general have been told over and over again that if they just never use the N-word and they never talk about race and they never physically molest anyone, then they're not racist or sexist. So when I point out that actually the system of power we live in ensures that all white people are racist and all men are sexist because they profit from a system that marginalizes people of color and non-males, they attack me. Oh, you know, I like this. It is so fucking manipulative, but I've got to, I've got to, if I had my hat on, I'd have to doff my cap to this particular thing. You know, we had this idea, this old idea that racism and sexism were linked to prejudice, and that's what they were. They were being prejudiced against people of other, of other races, of other ethnicities, or being prejudiced against people because of their biological sex or gender, right? That's the thing that we had and that's what these things were based upon. And in fact, 99% of the world, including most governments and most bodies, still use those same definitions. But in this, and I think maybe a little bit of Orwellian language might be required here, in this kind of SJW new speak, right? Racism and sexism become prejudice plus power. If the power element isn't there, they're not interested, right? It doesn't class as racism or sexism. But what Zana has done here, she has jumped the SJW shark and made a kind of SJW double new speak, right? And dropped the prejudice element entirely. I get the feeling they didn't really want the prejudice element in there because it limited them a little bit, right? All they're really interested in is the power part of it. So now power is equals racism and sexism. And let me show you how this works with a little bit of a, a graphic here. So under the traditional way of viewing racism and sexism as prejudice, if I'm there and I'm saying that um, I hate all women and I hate all Asians and Zana's there and she's saying I hate all men and I hate all white people, we would both be regarded as sexist and we would both be regarded as racist. Now in, under the SJW new speak of prejudice plus power, because I'm regarded as having systemic societal power, I'd still be regarded as racist and sexist, whereas Zana would get a bit of a free pass with regards to that. There's nothing that she can say that can be racist or sexist because she doesn't have power. So she gets a bit of a free pass and only those slur labels can be applied to me. But now look at under Zana's definition, right? She can continue to say that I hate white people uh, and I hate men, but I can stand there and say, well, actually, no, I don't hate women and I don't hate Asian people. In actual fact, I have no hatred in my heart for these people at all, right? And I can say that, and which one of us is the racist? Which one of us is the sexist? It's me, I'm still the racist, I'm still the sexist. Why? Because I've got power. And as far as Zana Josh is concerned, because I've got power and because I can benefit from that societal power, it doesn't matter one fucking crap how I am inside. It doesn't matter how bigoted and prejudiced I am to with, with, with get regard to people. I am a racist, I am a sexist. It doesn't matter how bigoted, it doesn't matter how prejudiced she is with regard to people. 
she cannot be a racist, she cannot be a sexist because she doesn't have power. What a brilliant, brilliant, deceptive way of trying to manipulate the dialogue. That is, well done, well done, Zana. I love those little kinds of games. But the thing that I really wanted to talk about in this video is the whole business of patriarchy because that's the central theme of the video. So that's what I'm gonna move on to now. My name is Zana and I'm doing this video because we need to talk. It's become clear to me that a great deal of us suffer from the illness of patriarchy. And it's not just the men who suffer, women can be patriarchal too. Yeah, okay, so two points. The first point is that I think we need to be a little bit careful here. It's clear, or at least it's clear to me, that when she's using the term suffer, she doesn't mean in the terms of something that we ought to feel, you know, some kind of concern to people for. She means suffer in the same way we may say that somebody suffers with anger management issues or suffers with violent, physically violent outbursts or something like that. That's the kind of way that she's using that term there. So be a little bit careful of that. The second is, is that it's very, very important. She makes the point that women can be patriarchal too and that made me think back to her humongous incident and and whether maybe that's what she was doing there right it just made me just tickled me for a little moment that maybe that was her demonstrating to all of us just how women can be patriarchal too if you need a little bit of a refresher of that incident let me play you a clip and then i'll have a few things to say on it Humongous. Humongous you, what? Humongous. Humongous what? That's what it is. Humongous, humongous what? Is that sexual harassment? No, it's humongous. Then why did you say that to That's me? That's my name. They're using you as a token and then you speak to me in a sexually harassing manner. How dare you? How dare you? Disgusting! 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 You just abused a woman! You just abused a woman and you have the audacity! You have the audacity to say that girls matter? How dare you? How dare you, you disgusting person! Disgusting! Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Are you going to do anything about how he sexually harassed me? Are you going to do anything about how he sexually harassed me? Oh, do you know, looking back on that again, it brings back how I felt the first time I watched it. I felt intimidated the first time I watched that. I felt intimidated listening to that verbal volley there. And that's me watching it through a screen. How he must have felt being on the receiving end of that, I can barely imagine. And all this is to do with is, is societal power. Right, and this is the point that Zana Joshi is making is that this is all tied in with societal power. But societal power is not a one dimensional thing, and different groups have different societal powers in different ways. And it, it is very much true, it's very true what Zana says, which is there are many, many situations in which men have the societal power. But this is one of the situations that where women very much have the societal power rather than the men. Imagine this I imagine myself in the local shopping centre and some. Somebody coming up to me out of the blue and start ranting at me like this and accusing me of sex. How dare I? How dare I? Disgusting, disgusting man sexually harassing me. How dare you? How dare you? How would I feel about being on the receiving end of that? Well, it would very much depend who was, who was giving me that verbal volley. In this particular instance, if it was a man that was doing it, it wouldn't bother me that much. I'd be a little bit freaked out that somebody had done it. But I wouldn't be worried about what everybody else thought because my thought was that most other people will think this is a right nut job here, right? This guy responding like that. But if it was a woman that came up and did that, I'd want the ground to just swallow me up. I would be absolutely mortified. Sort of, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be reduced to a gibbering wreck because what must everybody think I've done to warrant that kind of a response? What terrible awful despicable thing must have brought around this level of response okay and i get the feeling that zana joshi was well aware of that when she let out this response that she was aware that this was a situation where she had the power and note that as soon as she has the whip hand right she is more than happy to use it and what I note looking through all that footage again is that she's not very keen to explain to anybody exactly what the sexual harassment consists of. I presume because she thinks if she tells them, well, he said his name was Humongous 
a lot of a lot of the sympathy that she's getting, a lot of the horror that she may be generating amongst the crowd. What could this guy have possibly said? What despicable, awful thing must he have said might just evaporate when they found what they actually had said. So she kind of keeps it alive there. But of course, unlike my little shopping centre idea, the guy had said something to trigger it, right? But you've got to you've got to have a response just because somebody's done something that warrants perhaps a response doesn't mean that any response is acceptable. If Zana says something that I don't like, smashing around the face is not an acceptable response. It's a response that is way way out of proportion with what is called for, and that was the problem with what Zana did. Zana, it's not that you, it's not that oh my god a woman's raised a voice it's that your response was absolutely magnificently totally out of proportion to what was called for there and I know what you might say to me right well it's different for women because women have to put up with these sexual comments and men don't I've got to say to you absolute crap right I'm a firefighter you don't think I don't put up with comments like this at work especially from women who are slightly inebriated comments about oh look the strippers have just come in or 101 different comments all related to hose oh you're going to show us your hose oh you're going to have a play with your hose oh you're going to get your hose out do you think it would be an appropriate response for me to launch a verbal assault on on those kind of comments in response to that because I don't and do you know what I think I think if I did that or if a man launched the kind of intimidating verbal assault that you launched on this chap there, that you would regard it as despicable and unacceptable and as, as typical patriarchal behaviour. And that is what leads me to wonder, you know, if this is... Even if you didn't realise it at the time, this is a perfect example of how women can be patriarchal too, as far as you are concerned. Okay, that pretty much ties up what I wanted to say about that part. I want to get on now to the central part that Zana makes with regard to patriarchy, because this is where the whole fucking video comes undone as far as I'm concerned. So many things in our system today come from patriarchy, including racism, colonialism, capitalism, classism, and of course, sexism. You know, I can't help but when I hear something like this, detect a little bit of kind of anti-maleness amongst it. I know what will be said. No, no, we're criticising patriarchy. We're not criticising men or masculinity or anything that's in any way tied to men. But it doesn't really wash, does it? There is an inextricable link between patriarchy, between patriarchs and men because a patriarch is a man. And when you blame every single evil in the world, which is seems to be what um, Zana is doing on patriarchy, then what you're really doing is that you're blaming every evil in the world on the fact that men are in charge, because that is what a patriarchy is, right? That is what patriarchy means. It means men holding the power. It could mean men holding the power in the family, all the way up to holding the power in industry and in commerce and in business. It can mean men holding political power, whether that's through lobbying, whether it's through representation, the right to vote, or whether it's through holding the highest offices, such as the Prime Minister, it means men being and wielding power. So if you're saying that all these negative things are inextricably linked with men and men holding power, then I think there's something slightly anti-male, especially when you say that even when women are doing those same things, that's still patriarchy. So even when women are doing those things, there's still something inextricably, ineffably linked to maleness with regard to those things. And the big problem with it is, with regard to how we define patriarchy, is that it makes a laughing stock of the definition, because as I just explained to you what a patriarchy consists of, but you think of an example of a society that, and the, part of the problem with all of this, right, is that we don't actually have any matriarchies to compare it to. But if you start making the point that, no, no, these are all things that result from patriarchy, if only we can get rid of patriarchy, then these things will just melt away. You imagine something like Victorian Britain, right? A patriarchy. The man is the head of the household. All industry, commerce, business is run by men. All the members of parliament, they're all male. The prime minister's male, right? All these different things. It's men that are getting the chance to vote. 
And think think how it all fits in with these characteristics she gives. It's colonial. There's racism, classism rife within society. It's a highly capitalist society. It's a very sexist society. Now, all that I'm going to ask you to do with Victorian Britain is just swap one thing, right? Swap the position of men and women over so that women are the head of the household. So all the members of par parliament, the prime minister, the prime minister's cabinet, it's all run by women. All the business or commerce or industry, it's all owned and run by women, right? I would define that as a matriarchy. That's what I would define that as. But according to Zana Joshi, that would still be being patriarchal. It would still be a patriarchy. Why? Because there's still colonialism, there's still racism, classism, capitalism, sexism. All those hallmarks of patriarchy, all those things that are patriarchal, even when women are doing them, are still present within that society. Can you not see, A, why that makes a mockery of the idea of patriarchy, and B, why there's something slightly anti-male about that. That You're saying that these are negative things, and even when it's women that are doing all these things, they're still negative things. And the other point with regard to this is that it, it brings on a kind of gender essentialism that wouldn't be acceptable anywhere else. If I start, started talking about characteristics and associating certain characteristics with men and women, then the SJW crowd would quickly slap me down for doing that, wouldn't they? And yet seemingly once we start talking about patriarchy, then we can start associating negative things with men being in charge rather than suggesting that those negative things are human universals and that are just as a result of anybody being in charge as Zana Joshi has shown when she had the power in that humongous example there so I really find that that leads a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth there and that people like Zana Joshi have a little bit to answer for but I want to finish on just one last thing and I want to finish on a little bit of a happier note because I'm aware that these videos can get a little bit dour and yeah, I'd like to leave on something a little bit of a happier note and what a happier note could you leave on than to give Zana Joshi an award well I'll tell you a happy note you can leave on to make her the inaugural recipient of quite a prestigious award and this is an award that I'm starting now which is the Steve Shives Stats Manipulation Award some of you may have seen my video the other day aimed at Steve Shives and his marvellous bit of manipulation graphically to misportray the stats he was trying to show us. And I think that Zana has managed to outdo him. So much so that I've decided to start this new award. I don't know how long she will have the award for, but congratulations to Zana for winning that award. Let's have a look at what I was going to give her the award for. So this was what I was going to give her the award for. So, so this is the bubble chart in question. And what I've done is I've blanked off... Uh, the title at the top of the page there so you can't see what it's trying to show but you can see that there are two circles it is a bubble chart right and we've got two bubbles one for queer and one for hetero I can tell you that they are youths and what it is displaying is heterosexual youths and queer youths are queer youth I think being defined as a youth whose sexual orientation is anything other than regarded as heterosexual and you can see that the the bubble chart for queer is nine times the area of that for heterosexual okay i'll put you out of your misery and tell her and tell you what she was showing she was showing that queer youths are three times more likely to attempt suicide than heterosexual youths and she has portrayed that by showing a bubble chart where the queer bubble is not three times the area of the hetero one but it is nine times so effectively what she has done is she's done it in terms of diameter rather than area now if you look on the wikipedia page for bubble charts you will see it says the following the human visual system naturally experiences a disc size in terms of its area and the area of a disc unlike its radius or circumference is not proportional to its radius but to the square of the radius so if one chooses to scale the disc's radii to the third data values directly then the apparent size differences among the discs will be non-linear and misleading this is a misleading bubble chart that she has made here to overemphasize the data presumably in the hope that we'll just look at the circles and get it off that without realizing the corrupt little trick that she'd played so this was due to win the steve shive stats manipulation award but she managed to snatch the award from herself before i'd even finished watching her video with this particular bubble chart now again 
I've cut off the title at the top so you can't see what the title is. If you look at it, there are two circles, one men and one women. It looks like one of these kind of star charts, doesn't it, where the women one, that's kind of some main sequence chart and there's a sort of red giant. There's such a huge size difference there. There's like some kind of red giant next to it there. And you know what it's showing? Well, I'll put you out your misery. It's showing that men die by suicide three times more often than women. So she's showing that men die by suicide three times more often than women, inexplicably by showing one circle with an area of about 14 times that of the other circle. You can't even make the diameter defence in this particular uh, example. This is purely done as some kind of act of willful deception here to try and over portray the statistics. There is no justification that can be made whatsoever for this. It really did bring a smile to my face where I saw that. So what I'd like to do, because I'm leaving on a on a on a positive note, congratulations on a Joshi. You are the first recipient of the Steve Shive Stats Manipulation Award. So a warm, warm round of applause to Zana Joshi for having that award. We'll see how long that you manage to hold that award before somebody else, some manipulative, devious wanker manages to steal it from your grasp. Well, I hope everybody's enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and bye for now.